we're going to stitch an ornament and for that we're taking some vintage French mangle roll that's been cut into some squares. We've got a piece of wool felt that's been cut into a heart. We've got a little token, a little metal token, and some ribbon for the top and some filler for the inside. We also have a bit of embroidery floss and a needle. So the first thing we want to do is we want to thread the needle because we're going to need to stitch the felt and the token onto the front of the first panel before we stitch it all together. Starting from the inside, I'll find center-ish and I'll feed my heart on and see if that's the placement that I want. If not, I can move it down. There we go. Okay, the next thing I want to do is mark the edges for stitching around. I cannot stitch a straight line to save my life, so what I'm going to do is take my pencil and make some marks here for where I want to stitch. I'm going to stitch a little ribbon in the top corner. So I'm going to start with this ribbon in position right here. I'm going to start my, my needle on the inside. I'm going to stop at this point and stuff the inside with a little bit of paper shreds and um, this is just to give it a little bit of body. You can also um, use this as an oil diffuser, so, uh, putting essential oils on there and the paper gives it something to absorb into, but so does the felt. So just stuffing it a little bit. and there you have it. I like these little loose threads but if you don't you can pull them off. It's not supposed to be perfect, it's supposed to look a little uh, rustic, but there you have your stitched ornament with the vintage linen mangle roll. We're assembling this matchbox ornament and <clears throat> the parts that you have are this die cut out base for the matchbox. And what I recommend first is scoring along all of the crease lines. That'll make it going together a lot easier.
We're making these mini paper houses today and the template I printed out in my kit but it's also up for sale on my Etsy shop so you can print it onto anything you want, any paper that you want. I've even printed them onto white cardstock and drawn onto the outside, painted onto the outside, recycling my artwork, making little mini art houses. want to fold on the dotted lines. I find it easiest to fold backwards first so that I can see the dotted lines and then reverse the fold. Also in my kit I add a little bit of um, sticky back canvas. This is just to reinforce the position where the hole is going to be and so you could do this with any type of tape here. I know that I'm going to punch a hole in the outside of the roof and I want to make sure that um, it's reinforced so that over the years, as I hang this on my tree, that it doesn't um, pull out. And so the, the hole that I just punched wasn't quite on center. I'm gonna punch another one right here. That's better. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and fold all of these right on. And what works best for me is if you crease First, if you take a, a, a ruler and you crease right along those, so I'm just scoring it with my bone folder. Okay, we are going to make a vintage lace ornament and for that we have two pieces of glass, beveled glass, and we have some vintage lace. And what I like to do is find a spot on here that I want to um, have between glass and it's easier to have it not shift around on you if you just sandwich the piece between glass. It is a little bit fiddly at this point so I just want to get it moved into position there we go I would say before you start this you want to clean your glass my glass is clean now it's in position so you really want to squeeze it tight now so that it does not close up and now we're cutting off the excess lace and really go to town on this. Try to get in as close to the edge as you can because when you wrap your when you wrap your copper tape around the edge, you do not want there to be anything sticking out. So I'm going to trim that down just a little bit more. It can be a little bit to the inside of the glass, but you definitely don't want it sticking out of the glass. So I'm trimming just a little more. Again, putting it between the glass and closing it in. Sometimes you can push the excess in. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tape, our copper tape, 
and we're going to start to peel from one end. Don't pull it all the way off, but I'm going to start the tape at one end. And then holding the two pieces of glass together, I'm going to come around the outside edge. If you don't have a, a burnishing tool, you can use um, just the edge of a pencil. And that is just rubbing this copper tape into position, smoothing it out. If your tape is wide enough that it's coming around the front of your ornament, you can burnish that down as well. Both sides. And then I want to run along that ridge. I don't want to tear the tape, but I definitely want to put a little groove there because that's what my what my wire is going to rest in. Okay, so I've come all the way around. My lace is inside. I put the I burnished it down. The tape is nice and smooth. Next, I want to take my piece of wire and right in the middle, I want to crisscross the wires around a piece of uh, around a pencil okay, so that I have a nice loop formed there at the bottom and then I'm going to feed the crystal onto the wire okay, and then I'm going to twist the top I'm holding onto the loop and I'm twisting those ends just so that it secures it secures the top of this. Then I'm going to take both ends of the wire. I'm going to place this at the bottom position. Oh, we're about ready to get a little friend here. And pushing into the grooves as I go. She's enjoying the right. So the wire is resting in this groove that I pushed in. Okay, the crystal's hanging down to the bottom, I'm holding onto it firmly, and I'm going to crisscross the tops right here and twist them together. Twist them together. If you have a pair of pliers, it's a great time to get them out and hold on to this to twist them together. But if you don't, just twist them and that's what's tightening this up. I'm going to take the two pieces together up to the top. I'm also going to take my uh, pencil again and I'm going to wrap around the pencil and then I'm going to wrap around and around and around so I wrapped a loop around the pencil and then I'm wrapping around and around and around at the base of the ornament okay so that gives me a loop at the top and wrapping around there you can snip off the rest of the wire with some really good kitchen shears or I mean not really good you don't want to use your really good scissors but some scissors that that won't kill them so kitchen shears should work um, and then at the top you want to put a bit of lace that comes in your kit you can just loop it through and tie it at the top and that is it for your vintage lace ornament Okay, we are going to create our shadow box ornament. And first thing you want to do is take your wrapping off of your canvas. I have a little helper here. Yeah, you see that bee? I'm taking our wrapping off of our canvas. Let me get her down. And then we want to um, paint the canvas. You can choose whatever acrylic paint color you want. I'm going to use this um, teal color or this aqua color on the inside. So the places that you're going to paint, you're going to paint the inside. 
And the kit that I have given you, um, or the kit that maybe you're working with, um, we've drilled through one of the corners here. We've drilled through with a nice drill bit um, in the corner. And that's important to know where that is and make sure that we're getting this all covered. So you get super fancy and paint the outside edges one color and paint the background another color. But I'm just going to paint it all out the same blue. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to paint your outside edges. Okay, so I'm going to create a loop in the middle of this wire to hold the star. And for that, I want to use the tip of a pencil, not the fattest part, but the tip of it, just to get a little baby loop there. I want to feed the star on. Onto the wire. And then I want to twist the ends of that wire until I know that this is going to um, be able to be positioned correctly. So this loop needs to go straight down. I want to make sure that I'm giving myself enough space on the inside of the shadow box so that this can dangle. So you want to make sure that you've got enough space and then you're going to find the hole. I pre-drilled the hole in my kits, but I just used um, a Dremel and a drill bit and drilled a hole that was big enough for two pieces of this wire, two, two bits of the wire because it's doubled over to go through. So then I pull this up. So now you can't see it because I can't make it dangle when it's holding the camera angle, but that works. And then at the top, um, first thing I can do is twist these wires here, so crisscross them right, and twist them a little bit. This is just going to secure the position. And then I'm going to take both of those wires and I'm going to wrap them around my pencil again and twist around the base a couple of times. Make sure that the inside, that the star is pointing the correct direction. That is really vital because once you get the glass on here, you cannot fix it. So I'm going to cut the remainder of the wire off with some kitchen shears, just yucky scissors that you don't mind cutting metal with. Now I need to put the um, music paper over the, the frame here. And for that, I'm going to use glue stick. Now it doesn't seem like glue stick is going to work that well, but it really just needs to tack the paper into place. So I am going to put a little glue stick here on the frame. I just don't want the paper to shift. So I don't want it to be super gluey, but I also don't want it to shift. So rub it down into place. And then I'm going to press really firmly Okay, this kitten. I'm going to press firmly around this opening. And then if you have an X-Acto knife, that would be great if I had one here. I don't. I happen to have an awl, just a little pointy, pokey thing. But an X-Acto knife would be great or just a, a some sort of blade. But as you can see, a pin is where a pin would work. Pin, P-I-N, something sharp. All I'm doing is just tearing away the remain this inside part. It looks a little ragged. That is okay. I'm going to take my piece of glass. Make sure that it's clean. So um, clean it up with some glass cleaner. At least make sure the inside of it is clean. Because that you can do nothing about. 
once yeah. it's in position. So I'm going to clean that a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to take my copper tape and I'm going to start at the top. This copper tape doesn't look quite long enough for this project. I think the copper tape that we put in the kits is uh, wide enough. Sorry, this is a little bit narrow for my liking, but I think it will still do the job. You can see how I'm doing it. And then you'll use your copper tape that is a little bit wider. So all this needs to do is connect the glass to the canvas. So I'm burnishing that down into place. It's just taping the glass to the canvas. You want to make sure that this is lined up, that it's not offset, that it's not crooked. Press. Don't peel the backing of the tape off all at once. Just peel it off as you go. And then I notice I started up at the top by the loop and I'm finishing up at the top by the loop. Okay, and if you have jewelry pliers, you can pinch in the remainder of those little wires. Oh, hello Beatrix. She says, it looks great. Okay, baby, here we go. Okay, so there is your hanging shadow box. And I do believe this kit comes with a little wire hanger here. So to feed that on, you just feed it right onto this little loop and then you're able to hang this on your tree or wherever you wanna hang it. So my glass is a little dirty on the inside. Um, the other thing you might wanna do is burnish this tape down. So rub it down, you can use the edge of a pencil to do that. If your tape is uh, wrapping around to the front, then just rub that down as well. And you get a little extra bonus um, copper frame around the top. But that is your shadow box with glass with minimal amount of tools. All you need is a little bit of acrylic paint and a paintbrush. Um, you've got the wire for hanging. Um, and then if you want to write on here. I would recommend a Sharpie marker or a white paint marker um, if you wanted to write Merry Christmas or write the date on there, um, but you have your little shadow box.